This is now the second time I've put my trust in Kanye. And um, I have to say, not only am I disappointed in this album, I'm also very disappointed in him as a person, just seeing how he's carrying on right now on social media. I watched the Genius documentary on Netflix, and I saw all this amazing footage of his mother. And I always knew that she was his rock because he brought her everywhere with him. Uh, but with this footage, you get to see all those places that he brought her to. He brought her to every award show, even when he went to uh, studio sessions. He was meeting Diddy for the first time, so he brought his mom to meet Diddy for the first time. So she was there for everything. And she was his biggest supporter. She was his number one fan. She knew the lyrics to all of his songs and she always kept him level-headed, which is why at times I kind of give light to that conspiracy theory uh, surrounding the blood sacrifice. Uh, because if you know anything about that before you just say, oh man, this is crazy talking, I don't wanna hear that. If you've never actually done the research on these things, I wouldn't be so dismissive of these uh, of these possibilities, especially if you actually pay attention and listen to what real actors and what real musicians say about the industry and the people who control it, and, and what some of them have done. You know, the quote unquote, sell your soul to the devil, and how do you keep feeding the beast? to stay on top. You know, there was this theory that he he sacrificed his mother to achieve everything that he wanted. And seeing just how fame took someone who was already, like I said, very self-centered and, and had a big ego. Fame and money only amplifies that by what, a thousand? So imagine a big ego becoming an icon. Kaboom, that's what happens to the ego. And to want more, he wanted the fashion, he wanted to get into the fashion game and they were not letting him in. Uh, he wanted to be Michael Jackson, he wanted to be God. Like he, he finally proclaimed on the Yeezus album, I am a God. So how far would someone like that go? to get to achieve all those dreams. I mean, I, I heard him say a lyric that was, uh, I sold my soul to the devil for a shitty deal. It came with uh, a few toys and a happy meal or something like that. It's a song called Eyes Closed with uh, Snoop. Just lyrics like that and, um, you know, a lot of other things if you, if you know, if we have to get into uh, reprogramming people's brains and, and stuff like that and brainwashing them and having handlers and all this stuff. Kanye is a walking example of it. And when he had his breakdown and was in the mental institution for a few days and we hadn't seen him for like a month and he came out with the blonde hair and his, that kind of dead look in his face, like he, he was like, he was like a walking corpse. He was never the same after that breakdown. And I feel like it was all really con connected to his mother. And that's when handlers like the Kardashians can step in and get their little uh, vampire fangs in him and drain him of everything like they did, or they're trying to continue to do it. Like what, what woman lays down to have kids with someone right after they have a mental breakdown? You know, as soon as, as, soon as he came out of the hospital, she was, she was talking about, I'm ready to have more kids. Like it's clear that they were trying to get everything that they needed uh, before discarding of the robot, uh, formerly known as Kanye West. So back to this album now, the first album, I did not like because I didn't like that it was called Donda 
and that the only reference to Donda was this very weird intro that just had a female's voice repeating the name over and over and over again at different octaves. And then the rest of the album seemed like a trap, gospel, heavy on the drill beats type thing, which leads me to think that this was supposed to be your Jesus is King 2. And I don't know why you chose to soil your mother's name with putting out a product like that. Even the features on the album, with the exception of Jay Electronica, The Locks, and uh, Jay-Z, uh, there, were, there were artists on that album dropping verses that had no connection or, or, or nothing to Donda. Like, believe me, after what I saw in the documentary, I could definitely see that she, she would have been down with so many hip hop heads, even like the young generation. Generation, If Kanye was feeling it, she would probably feel it too. That, that's, she was just an awesome soul like that. But the album never connected to the main inspiration, which was his mother. So I was like, why would you just use her name to sell records? And then comes this live performance where you have the, the recreation of your house and it's all dark, like it's a horror film. It's dark and gloomy and you have fire burning inside the house and you have Marilyn Manson of all people standing on the porch right outside your mother's house watching you as you perform. I started wondering if that's his new handler. You know, now that it's not the Kardashians or, you know, I know Ellen definitely controls the Kardashians. If you watch this interview with Kanye and Ellen, like she uses key phrases to get reactions out of him and talks to him like he's like a, an infant. It's because she knows he's medicated and she knows how to, to deal with these things. I'll put up the clip, uh, at least the audio, so they won't fly at me. Seeing all that. I'm like, what, what does Marilyn Manson have to do with your mother? I, I, I didn't see it. And the whole atmosphere, that dark cult atmosphere of that live uh, listening party, it was, it didn't feel right at all. I was watching it at night when it was, when it was live. I did not feel right at all. Now here comes the second album. And I was convinced that there was a chance that this was actually going to connect to his mother because of the release of Life of the Party featuring Andre 3000. I heard that song and heard Andre's verse dedicated to his mother, but he's speaking through Donda, asking Donda to talk to his mother, who's also passed away, because he said that he doesn't see her in, in his dreams. He doesn't communicate to him from heaven. So, hey, if you're up there, can you tell her that I miss her? Can you tell her this and that and all these things that I did as a child or as a young man was for this reason and that? And then Kanye had this other verse that wasn't about his mother at all. And thankfully, Tyler, the creator, one of my favorite artists and producers, he heard the song. He's heard an early version of the song. He said that Kanye had this verse about his mom originally on it. And it was heart pounding, explosive, beautiful dedication to his mother. And after the whole Drake thing, he got off of his, his uh, grind and started making, redoing all the songs, targeting at Drake, talking about Drake, talking about his divorce and lost the true essence of the album, which was his mother. Now, seeing him off his meds in this documentary, I could see how he could lots of times lose his way, lose his path. He's not staying on this linear thing where he's like, okay, I said this is what it's gonna be from start to finish. No, he's having 10 million ideas, 10 million things going on around him, producers working on stuff while a movie's playing on the wall, uh, designers cutting clothes here, 
uh, video editors doing stuff. It's like that scene in Walk Hard with John C. Riley when he's at the point of lunacy as a as an entertainer, and he has like ten million people in the studio playing di- ten different genres of music, trying to make this one singular track. It's hilarious and so real at the same time, because this is exactly what Kanye does. So, upon he- hearing that this man use all this energy to whatever is irking him and and not staying on his path. I was like, it's happening again. It's happening again. Because here comes Donda 2. And it's worse than the first one. It's worse than the first one. There is no intro mentioning her name a, a bunch of times, like some weird ritual or something. It's there's no mention of his mother at all. It's all about his divorce with Kim, and he's wasting so much time and energy on Pete Davidson, which is the most ridiculous thing. I would like just for one time if Kanye would get into a beef or a fight with someone who could actually give him a good fight, a good run for his money. You, you beef with Taylor Swift, Delicate Drake, uh... And Pete Davidson, like you're going gangster, you got the game on you with you on a song. Yeah, you're getting grimy on Pete Davidson, and and come on, man, come on, man, just take one pill then. I know, I know, I know. You think being crazy is a superpower, but just take one pill and see how you feel, man. See how it bounces out before you go ahead and do these things, brother. I don't get it. So this album. The stem player, the two hundred dollar stem player. I said no. I have no problem admitting, I bootlegged it. Mm-hmm. You're damn right. I bootlegged it. Not paying two hundred dollars for this kind of bullshit, and it's offensive because there's absolutely no energy, nothing expended towards his mother. Nothing, 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 and the music is. So it's weak. And a lot of things aren't even finished tracks. It's just him mumbling, um, doing filler tracks, and expecting people to pay $200 for that. I wish he would spend more time focusing on this idea and actually doing something proper for his mother as opposed to wasting all this time and energy on the vampire Kim and her next victim. Sorry. PJ said, you know what I mean? Like this album, uh, there's no, there's no songs that are going to be hits whatsoever. I'm actually trying to remix a couple of them so that maybe I can have one or two songs to listen to. I'll be releasing those soon on my channel. The one good song. Okay. How about this? One good song. True Love. Uh, the one with Triple X Stancio. I hope I'm saying his name right and not with too much of an accent. It's a chorus that he definitely bought from the estate, um, uh, from a track that uh, you know the, the the rapper, the the artist had recorded, and Kanye kind of sampled a piece of it and and used it on the song. They definitely were not in the studio together to record this, and I don't know his music that well, but that's a very uh, addictive hook on True Love. And he sounds really dope on it too. Um, The beat's dope also. He's reusing the same drums that he used on Runaway from his Dark Twisted Fantasy album. And um, I just wish there were more moments like that on the album. And, uh, you know, instead of this discombobulated mess that is just uh, disrespect to them. Like, I would never do that. I would never name something after someone I love and meant the world to me, especially if they're no longer here, and then put out some bullshit. So, that's my review on Donda and uh, my thoughts on Mr. West right now. Drop me a comment, like, share, and a big shout out to all my subscribers. Till the next one. Peace.